I'm MTG, and welcome to my channel where I waste my wild cards on meme decks so you don't have to. I uh, figured since this is the first video I'm making, I should tell you a little bit about the theme of the channel, and it is basically meme decks. So everything that you'll see here is just like a pun or some sort of like riff on the celebrity name based on like the movies they were in or just like the name themselves it could be uh, movie themes just anything that is kind of just like a silly pun is really what you'll see so because of that I'll probably have some wild not good synergies just because I'm trying to like do a theme out of the deck and because of that like definitely it'll you'll see some jank out there uh, but for today's theme I thought it'd be fun to do something this is like a pun that i've been thinking about for a while and how i'd want to build a deck around it and it's for historic brawl and it's kira knightley because if you don't know the actress kapow, she was in stuff like pirates of the caribbean and i think like some time piece like romance movies like atonement i never watched those because i'm not huge into romance like movies but i know it was they were pretty popular, um, but really <laughs> what I think I know Kira Knightley most from is as a kid, I used to get like her and Natalie Portman mixed up all the time. Like I thought they were the same person. And so it wasn't until I was like maybe in my teens that I realized that Kira Knightley was Natalie Portman's character, like Queen Nadala or something like that was her like double in the movie and I just was like oh my god I feel so validated so in Star Wars Clone Wars uh Kira Knightley was the double for Natalie Portman's character when she was like Queen Nadala so I was just like oh my god yes they're the same uh so that was pretty funny for me uh, but to the whole theme of uh, the deck itself, which I think would be fun to review, we have Kira Knightley, and the whole point of this deck was to kind of do like a life gang knight tribal, and with the knights, because there wasn't a whole lot that I felt like I could, I don't know, run a decent amount of games with where I'm just not getting my my butt handed to me. Um, I tried to put like human tribal in with it as well uh, because this commander here when I was looking at different commanders I thought would fit the theme uh, he just made the most sense General Kudro of Dranith and so what this card does when I thought it'd be a good commander and also why I leaned into the human tribal pieces a bit is it gives other humans plus one plus one and then Another really nice piece, especially with these more like recent formats where there's like just a lot of graveyard play going on or cards that have some sort of interaction in the graveyard, I wanted to bring something that had a bit of graveyard hate to it. So what's really nice about General Kudro is you can just exile a card when either it enters the battlefield or another human does. And so that kind of builds into the other human tribal aspect where I just have graveyard hate in the command zone, which is just very nice. <laughs> like just that you'll come across like different types of like mill decks or things with flashback where just being able to hit something from the command zone out of the graveyard is really nice. Um, and then the other part of it is if you sacrifice two humans, you can destroy a creature with power four or greater and so that um is pretty nice too because if i'm doing like some kind of like aristocrats like strategy where maybe i want to drain someone for some damage then i can sack uh some of my own creatures and then take out one of theirs at the same time so for the most part again everything in this deck is trying to do some sort of life gain aspect and feed into kind of like the human tribal 
uh, there are some things in here that I just kind of have to auto include just to, so the deck has a chance out in the w <laughs> in the wild. And one of them is a uh, massacre worm. And part of this is just because I have a goal in life where I just want to hit all the skewed swarms. Like you know when your opponent is on like their one thousandth like skewed swarm, and you're like, ah, how do I get rid of all those? I lost the game. I just want one chance to drop a massacre worm and kill someone with their own skewed swarms because they'll get the minus two minus two until end of turn, and then for each like one thousandth uh, skewed swarm they make, it'll do two damage to them. So that just sounds like I don't know. That's like my my goal in life is just to drop a massacre where when someone has like a million skew swarms out uh the mvps of this deck because i have played a few games when i was testing it i would say our adeline i mean if you play standard you know and probably hate or love this card depends on <laughs> what end of the spectrum you are if you're playing mono white very much but uh, she is just so strong and just creating all those tokens and just boom hitting you for all that damage and creating again tokens that are human which I could sacrifice to General Kudro to deal uh, damage if I have drain effects out or to just take out a mean creature so that's just a really powerful effect um, but yeah so that's kind of me talking a lot about it so hopefully that would not draw on for too long with this. Uh, but let's go see what it's like out on the ladder. So see you out there. Here we go. Christopher the Hedgehog. Actually, I think I played against this person before. And they're using Hidnata. This is not good hand. Very little mana. Ooh, much better start. Ooh, even with an Esper, that's gotta feel good. Yeah, let's keep this. Yeah, even the way to protect the board, too. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm so excited to have a turn one Esper. Hells, yes, baby. We are keeping this. So, gonna drop the cave. Get my little Esper out. <laughs> now I don't care if I lose the game. I'm just happy this happened. <laughs> Oh, and I even have a massacre set up. Ah, this is great. I'm gonna bonk them for one. I'm sure that really upset them. Okay, so I'm thinking for the next move. Gonna resolve. Okay, so there are token creator here, which will make this even more satisfying. It's no skew swarm uh death but you know I'll take it uh, so what I think I'm gonna do next is just get the commander out so that I can get Esper a little boost part of me almost wants to see if they're gonna trade but I'm gonna save it for hopefully whenever I can get a Masker Worm out I do need to obviously ramp more into it yeah I won't attack I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna save my removal for the commander, and then I'm thinking the next turn it might be smart just to get this down for protection in case they do have like a board wipe or something. So, yeah, dropping it here. So, again, to give my dudes indestructible. I love stuff that just gives protection to your creatures like that. They're probably gonna take out. Esper, yeah. I still get the card draw from it, which is nice. And another land. So I'm one, two, three, four, five, six. Woohoo! Yep, baby. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm really, really happy. Um, I'm gonna l not attack because I'm kind of hoping that they'll play into my Masker Worm a bit. They're gonna drop Hanada for sure, which I'll hit. Or maybe they won't. Maybe they're scared. I can see that they're thinking over here. I definitely am happy <laughs> that I got this down. They're passing. wonder if they got like a counter spell. I will drop this down. And this. 
I'm so curious if they're gonna try countering stuff. It's a human knight, so when I put down vulnerable knight, that'll be nice. Ooh, yeah. Just building up this board state here. And then I don't think even if they tried to double block. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked, but I don't know. At least I got one token. Oh, I'm so excited. And then if they play Hinata again, I'll just Fateful Absence it. I feel like they're going to try to make me use the Selfless Glyph Weaver, though, just so that I am forced to use it. Okay. Waiting for the spicy play. Okay, idyllic grange. I will put down field of ruin instead. Next and next. And then I think I'm just gonna go all in baby. Yeah. I'm curious what they're holding on to. I feel like they're getting ready to just, because that's like counter spell, or maybe they're bluffing one. I don't know. But I definitely should start getting more aggressive. Sweet, that was a lot of damage. And then they have Hinata, if they're ever gonna play her. Okay, they're. I feel like maybe they're trying to protect her a bit. I wonder what they're looking for. I do more standard in arena, so when I do like the more historic um, games, I don't always know like what cards are in arena because I do paper magic for like commander, which helps me learn like what all of these cards do. But as far as like knowing what historic cards are available in um, arena, I'm just like. Uh, I don't really know what to expect sometimes, especially with a card like this that's so new. They keep... Okay. Do I care? I think I'm going to win anyways next turn, so I'm just going to give them all indestructible. Okay, they're copying. It's just giving me more fuel for that Massacre Worm. And I think if I drop the Massacre Worm, I got it next turn, right? So let's say I drop it now. You get two, then they block that, block that. They take four, six, nine. This is going to be a YOLO moment, right? Let's do it. Oh wait, that's right. <laughs> I forgot that was going to die. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's time to go. Ooh, that's the uh, new samurai. I think they're sisters, right? Hmm. This game doesn't, uh, this game, this hand doesn't have a whole lot going on for it. I think I'm going to mulligan to see if I can just get better plays off the start. I like this more just because of Daxos, but still kind of the same meh start. But at least maybe I'll gain life. Yeah, I'm just going to keep this and see where it goes. Because for science, why not? Also, I have a morale kitty. If she'll let me show. Aria. Very sweet. Like the most chill cat. And she likes to hang out with me while I uh, cast spells on the internet. And drool on me. One of those happy cats that drool a lot. <gasps> this is, okay, let's just be honest here. Best card in the new set, right? Cute doggo. Can't go around with that. I'm gonna put my commander down because why not? Let's get this going. So I'm guessing maybe they're gonna do like some sort of enchantment Voltron. Whenever a samurai warrior you control attacks alone. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'll just go ahead and attack. I'm not too worried. Because if they're trying to equip that creature to Voltron it up, which is honestly 
the best way to die. If a doggo like this just comes at me as like a 2020 because they just beef it up with all the enchantments, like that's pretty hilarious. Even if I might have to moida it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to. I mean, look at it. It's such a good doggo. It's a little sassy shibu. And they'll get trample. Yeah, this has to be like a Voltroni deck, right? <gasps> oh my goodness. Went right for my commander. Okay. I'm gonna drop my other mana down. And I'm thinking... Hmm. I think I want to do Blood Pact, but I'll wait on their end step to drop it. Because if we can get another black source, then we'll be in a lot better place. Okay, giving the doggo some trample. Pretty cute. Again, not going to be sad if I die by a cute puppy. Oh, should probably put that on the end step. Okay, they're going to combat. There's no reason why they wouldn't swing in and bonk. Are they going to give it a little boost? What's going on? Well, they definitely have an instant in their hand. I wonder if they're thinking if this is the time to use it or if they're going to wait till it gets like stronger. Let's see. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize it tutors too. That's a bit more dangerous. Yeah, I'm having a pretty slow board state right now and that sucks let's do this now i wish i had like a village rights or something i could just sacrifice it i got ah, yeah i need another black source here this sucks i think this is really the only thing i can do until i get another mana Ugh. i would rather save that but again i need more mana it's going to be one of those games, right, where you just get screwed because you don't get the right mana type. I just feel like I should be able to do a lot more. One, two, three, four, five. Well, at least I'll be able to play one of these guys. And then they just keep getting the tutor. Yeah, this is not an ideal board state for me right now. It would have been nice to keep this because it gets all non-land permanents, which would just be a good enchantment wipe. Okay, still not the right kind of mana, still slightly worrying, but at least my commander will get buffed by this guy, which is why I had them in, and maybe they'll hesitate to attack as well because it's got death touch. So what I'm thinking next is General Kudro, so it gets buffed. Ah, man. Well, there's the black source I needed. Right. The treasure. And then, worst case, I can always get it back with that. Must be really nice, though, they can just keep tutoring. What are they tutoring for? So, things with mana value 1? Or is it total damage? Okay. Because I can. I should have probably waited till they made more spirits, but I just love when I can play this. Or at least set up Sir Conrad and then done that. Probably would have been the better play just because I would have gotten more damage out of it. I'm going to say I need more caffeine. Let's sip on some tea. They're thinking with their thoughts. They really want to Voltron up their little spirited companion. And then too, we can get that other guy back with this. Unfortunately, it goes to the hand. I'm not like super in a rush either to get that card back. So, 
Maybe Sir Conrad is the next card to play. I really messed up not doing that in the right order. I should have put Sir Conrad Grimm down, been okay with taking a little bit more damage and then dropping that. Let's see, one, two, I have six mana open, so I could use this removal and then put Bastard Ket down and pump Masker Worm, and then they have to start dealing with the Planeswalker. Ooh, or they can do that. Sag. Okay. So we can put Sir Conrad down and Bastry still. And then it would be really cool if we could get Bastry's ult off. What is really good about this, because I love pillow fort effects, like this is so sweet. I might have to add that in. I don't know necessarily if this is the right deck for it, but it's pretty sweet when you flip it. Like just slowing, it slows down the plays so much, especially with like just those aggro decks that you might come across. Might make like a standard deck too that uses that more. Sweet. So I think this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna destroy their commander. And then I'll probably. Uh, no, I don't have any more black. Hmm. Well, then I guess Skyclave goes down. And then next turn, I can try to get that back. Okay. Sir so Conrad's gonna do damage. Probably, I don't really need to kick that anymore, so I don't really care if I play this. Like, I don't know how much like extra use that's gonna give me if I do play it or wait to play it just so I could kick it. They're still thinking here. That's the one thing that's really hard about playing like more Voltron-y type decks is like if people have removal or force you to sack a bunch of stuff, like it's just really hard to um build up your board state. I, at least that's I why I kind of stay back. away from uh, more Voltron type style builds for decks just because if you put all your resources into one thing and it dies then you, it's so much harder to rebuild over and over again. Like unless you have a commander that's really good at like cheapening up the resources more. Um, yeah it's just that's just my thought on that though. And I just decided to mill because maybe more damage. Put here. Okay. So I got a creature card from that. And then potentially if they don't have anything to remove Sir Conrad, then I should in theory win this upkeep. Or this next combat. Whatever that term is. So maybe I can top deck a removal spell. We shall see. If not, then I'll be able to ult Bastry next turn. And just uh, when he ults, it's really sweet. You get to make a 1 1 white soldier token each upkeep, or not upkeep, uh, combat and then you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature so like those new soldier tokens assuming they don't die will just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger uh i'm going to grab the knight i don't remember if i get a trigger i guess oh never mind it's put into a graveyard or leaves your graveyard so it might do damage yeah sweet i did get the trigger for that Okay, and then I'll put this down, just to get another body, and then that way if they put down another body, I might have a chance to keep going wide here. Uh, 
My sand will protect you. I do want a blocker just in case, but I guess like Bastry isn't necessarily like a win con for me at this point. If I can, I forgot stuff was coming in tapped because of that enchantment over there. So yeah, they took they took it, and then my guess is they're gonna pump the samurai up and try to go for Bastry because that has vigilance. But I think I can still go wide here. These legendary, okay. Yeah, because they have to go after Bastry. I'm curious what they're gonna pull out here. Maybe Can we not another body. I thought they'd go for another body, like the dog. So one turn. Okay, that makes sense. Ooh. one of those moments. Let's see, who do we want to put you on? Let's put you on that so you don't die when we attack. Um, kind of don't really care about him as much anymore. Ketra's word throws our call. Because it's whenever I attack with a non-token. Uh, I had that out. That was cute. Let's hit your dog so you can't get another body out and then we'll just go wide. Sweet. I don't know how they're getting out of this. I don't think they can. I think they forgot I had Skyclave Relic out. GG's, GG's. It's time. Oh no. Is it Moldroth? That's a. I know it's got a reputation in Commander, at least, as a pretty strong. strong. uh. Commander deck, usually. Combo stuff. But I don't really know how it plays as much in Historic Brawl, so this will be interesting. Uh. I think I'm gonna keep it because I have a few early plays. And some decent creatures. So, yeah, this looks like not a bad hand. Mostly just happy about the turn one Esper I'll be able to do. And I'm wondering, too, if I maybe just need like an aggressive start for this one. Because um, it is an expensive commander, so maybe I'll be able to bonk it, or not it, the player, uh, quite a bit before they can play their commander. So basically what I'm trying to say is goal is to hit face before they can play their commander. But I don't know if I'll be able to put out enough damage for that. Okay. Shadow Spear. Interesting. I will drop that down. Enters the battlefield. I think I'll play that next turn because I don't have any turn three. I guess I have my commander. I don't know. I kind of just want to take a peek at what's in their hand. So I think I'm going to do this just to kind of build up my board state a bit more and then see what they have in their hand right now so I know what to expect threat wise. So yeah, get their planeswalker, hit them for one because it's a ferocious Esper here. They have an unsummon, so it's good to know. Maybe I can uh, get them to waste it as well with this Corpse Knight. And then when I drop like General Kudro, they, they might just put like something spooky in here back to my hand. I don't really care if they bounce anything, honestly. And it would just give me card draw as well. What you thinking about, friendo? I don't know, I'm really curious why they have Shadow Spear. Like, I know getting rid of the uh, Indestructible and Hexproof is really good, but I just feel like with Moldroth, I don't. I just don't feel like I would, I don't know, see how that's used really effectively. 
I guess it is nice if you have like a big creature out to give it trample, obviously, but I just thought that was interesting. And then too, I can be really mean and go after their ramp next turn. But I might want to save that to hit the Shadow Spear. Okay, hitting them for one again. No, it's not the most aggro start. So one, two, three, four, five. We've got five mana ready. Okay, they're gonna ramp. So hopefully I'll get a removal spell here. That would be very nice. Because I would like to hit their commander before they can really do a whole lot of damage. Alright. Let's get Wind Grace out. And then she can start creating tokens with the toughness. Okay. So maybe I can start, um, like, being able to sacrifice some humans to at least take out their commander if I don't draw a removal spell. They still have that unsummon in their hand too. They're getting me Oh, that's bad. Oh, uh, shoot. Okay. That hurt. I did not realize that's what that card did. It was Ravnica's before my time. Minus four, minus four. That's that's pretty sweet. Okay. Sunset Revelry's a little dead in my hand. I think the play here is going to be my commander. And I'll just hit Jace in case they can bring it back for whatever reason. I th and then the other here. I don't really have a way right now to deal with their commander, which is really spooky. Ugh, this is bad. Okay. So, I'm going to put you down. So if they do attack, at least I have something with death touch down. I'm going to unsummon. That's fine with me. Actually, I'm happy they wasted it on that. Okay. And Esper did get me a lot of card draw. I'm kind of worried about this, though, because now that they have their commander down and we're just not drawing any, any removal. Might be able to run away with stuff, but they also only have a land in their hand. Okay. I really don't care about that. What's gonna- what happens? Okay, they're just holding. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this now. Because they seem to really love that. Okay. And then Janeth again. Not a big deal. What are we gonna hit here? Oh, there's Shadow Spear. And then I doubt they're gonna wanna trade And they have to top deck something really nice here. Oh, there was the really nice thing. Still took two damage for that though. Uh, I won't block. Not super worried about a 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> it's actually really funny. So they kind of have nothing going on. I probably should have saved that for their turn in case they put like resources into it. They're empty handed. They can, I think, cast their commander again. Six. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, yeah, they could cast it again if they wanted to. What are we going to hit? Let's take out the removal. Give that a boost. He's got first strike. He's going to attack. Bonk. 
The sunset revelry is kind of dead in hand right now. But it is good when it's good. Oof, that's bad. Tasting my own medicine here. Alright. I think we need to draw. Okay, I don't hate that. But I don't love it. Hmm. Well, worst case, if I lose my commander, I can cast Sunset, get two chump blockers. I think I might be able to still go wide, possibly. If I get Cosmo down next turn. I forgot they nerfed this. That's why I don't like buying stuff that's been infected by alchemy. You have to remember like five different versions of the same card and it's so annoying. Because it's scry instead of draw. Oh man. Okay. Unless I get like a board wipe, I think I'm just done. Yeah, I'm just done unless I get a board wipe. And they're gonna hit me for six. Okay. That sucks. I don't think I have enough mana to do what I need to, right? Six. Yeah. Man, this sucks. Okay. We'll get our chump blockers out. Get some life gain from that. Dropping this to hopefully pull into an answer. Let me view the battlefield. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We would need two more mana for Meat Hook Massacre to get rid of both. I think I'm going to put that to the bottom and hope I get a better board wipe. This is game over. Rest in peace. Maybe I should have been more aggro. I don't know. I just feel like it was really unfortunate because I didn't get um, the kind of removals right off the bat that I needed. Yeah, two life for that. That sucks. Yeah, unless I top deck like the miracle board wipe. I don't think I'm going to come back from this. Not what we're looking for. Can we even hit anything? Good. I don't think we can hit five. Because I already used all of my mana. Yeah, I think it's just a Dunzo's. And we got them solo too. But yeah, when I sell Mold Moldra? Moldra? However you say it, I just was like, ah, I don't think we're going to win <laughs> this one. It's like certain commanders, you know, like when they get their stuff out on the board, it's just My like, oh, it's, they're dead. World. Like the first slivers, it's like, you know, if you don't kill them before they get their commander down, it's just, at least with this deck, like you're just kind of dead. Rib. Rib. Rest in peace. I'm still gonna make them try to earn it. <laughs> Dead. Blah. Oh well. Good game. GG's. Ooh, we're in it for another one. Oh, Tiamat. Let's see how we do. Hmm. This feels really slow, too. Let's do a free moly. Better-ish, but I still think this is a really slow start, and we're probably not gonna do well this turn or this game. So for those of you who don't know, Tiamat is a big stompy stompy dragon that puts other stompy stompy dragons and just makes you very sad when you get murdered by every dragon. 
so it might have to be like the the Muldra or Muldrith, whatever Muldra, whatever that commander was that was from the last game. Like I think this is just another one where if I don't um, kill them before they get their commander out, they just win the game. So let's put him out. And maybe get some of that damage boost going. Because then we can put down uh, Bastry. Some counters out too to make the commander bigger. So maybe less susceptible to removal. Hmm. That seems like the right play here. I'm going to do Bastry just because we can get the boost here. And I don't think they're going to want to trade their foundry. Yeah, I should have swum with my commander too. The next I think I'm going to Knight's Pledge. Probably the commander. The plus side is if Corpse Knight dies, then I can still get a replacement body. Yeah. So that's why I targeted it with the plus one plus one counter, because I figured it has a drain effect, and that when it died... Oh, they quit! Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe that's all we need to do with these, like, more scary commanders, is just come out, like, really aggro off the bat. So Slurping on some tea. Okay. Game Slayer. Is, I don't even know what that commander does. I should read that. <laughs> um, hmm. This feels really slow to me and too much mana, maybe. Ooh, Adeline keeping that. That is an ideal hand. Let's take a look. Legendary spells you cast. Or one. Oh, wow. I can't read today. Legendary spells you cast cost one less to cast. Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard until end of turn. Each legendary card in your graveyard gains. Oh, that sounds spooky. I don't think I've seen that commander before. Let's start with getting the white down. Explorer. Okay, so they're going right into that early ramp. And I'll just foretell that just in case. I almost wonder if next turn... Okay, Adeline, and then maybe I'll force out some of that removal too. Nope. Interesting. Stop. I always get so nervous when they're like touching my card. I mean, that's fine. It's a body. One with nature now. Do we get any benefit by playing General Kudro? No, because she's she's an elk now. She's returned to nature. So I'll put down this just to get some more bodies out. And then I can give them all a bump next turn when they attack. I'm going to play their commander, which might have been a tad bit too early for them. Now I'm going to hit that. I mean, it did put me putting... Put me putting my commander. English is weird. It did delay me from dropping my commander, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> oh man. Mox Amber is one of those cards, like, it sounds good in theory, but I feel like it can be pretty useless at the same time just because you have to have some legendary creature out, which does obviously work well with your commander, but in this case I just killed the commander before they could really do anything. So now I have to discard a card, and I'll get rid of this dude. They're not always the most useful, at least in my opinion. Um, get my commander out so he can boost the others to get more damage in, and then he is exile graveyard hate, because he's exiling cards. Again, struggling to use words. Good thing I'm recording content. <laughs> okay, going in for the hit. Good luck with your I think they're cure. trying to do that just to slow me down a bit. I'm going to hold on a blood pack and cast it on their end step. 
just so it looks like I have like maybe mana up for removal, they might hesitate a bit. Oh, and they quit. Okay, bye friend. Good game, good game. Hello, if you're here, that means you stay till the end and I appreciate the heck out of you. Uh, so I figured right now a good closing out would be just to review a little bit of the stats today and see how basically Kira Knightley did out in the wild. Was she more than just a pun? And based on how today went, I think so. 80% win rate. We did only do 5 games, but 80% win rate for a meme deck. I'll take it. Uh, as you can see, for on the play, we had 100% win rate, which I think is just true more for a lot of the aggro-based decks that you, like, you come across. Like, if they're on the draw, they're usually hindered quite a bit because they just, you can put down your mana and maybe drop a creature early on. I would say this deck does lean more into, like, the aggro-based strategies, even though I do have some alternate win cons with some drain effects or dropping something like Massacre Worm, where you can do a ton of damage if they have, like, anything that's 2-2 toughness or lower, um, or just a way to just, you know, pick at them with, like, um, oh my gosh, Grim Sir Conrad. Wow, I almost forgot his name. Sir Conrad's really good to... Uh, for additional drain effects if you have people that are doing like a bunch of graveyard play or you know you're making them uh, if they mill as well like there's some decks that enjoy a mill so you can punish them basically for certain play styles uh, and that's why he's usually a target whenever I do successfully cast him and put him on the battlefield but I've had a few different versions of this deck the first version of it I think struggled a little bit because I had too much enchantment removal and artifact removal that I think could have been a lot more effective as far as uh, dealing with certain problems. I did cut a lot of that removal and figured out how to make things more efficient. So I think it's Cathar Commando is a body and it can be used to take out an enchantment. So I put in those kind of cards where you get you know potentially an aggro body can get tougher with the commander and it wasn't just a one-time use spell that I could use to remove an enchantment so more effective uh, you know change outs for that and then something else that really really helped that you saw in an earlier game was the glyph weaver because it gives indestructible to all the creatures on the board and if you have an aggro board you want to find different ways to try to keep those creatures alive so what was really helpful with that change is someone would drop a board wipe or try to kill a cre cre key creature that i had out and i was able to protect it so adding in some protection spells and then more focused and improved removal really helped this deck overall perform better so I'll go ahead and show the overall stats, and I believe this includes like all the older versions that I had of this as well. And I believe it was a 66, yeah, 66 percent win rate. Uh, and again, that's out of 29 matches. I think for a deck that's based purely on a theme, and you know, did have some areas where I needed to improve over time. Uh, that's not bad. I mean, it's brawl too so it's not like you're doing anything competitively ranked but yeah I mean it's it's worth giving it a try if you're looking for kind of a way to mix things up that isn't necessarily like another goalless or slivers deck it's a it's a fun way to kind of meme on people so yeah uh thanks for hanging out and watching till the end have a good one see you in the next video bye